this is John from caveofprogramming.com and this is a um, fairly small but nevertheless very important tutorial on casting in Java. So um, in Java there's a bunch of numerical types, um, for example we've got uh, int, um, which uh, let's say we have a, um, an integer value, um, we can use int to store it. And there's also like um, there's a short version of int which takes up less memory. I think int is actually 32 bytes, um, uh, and uh, short is I think 16. Sorry, 32 bits for int, and short is 16 bits. I think that's right, or two bytes. So let's say short uh, short value equals um, 55 or something. And there's also, there's also like a byte type, and byte can only store up to um, from it's like from minus 128 to plus 127, so a total of 256 different values if we include the zero. So let's say here byte value equals 20 or something, and there's also like a, a long, so um, long value equals, and that could be a really really long number. And of course we've got floating point values. We've got um, float um, float value, and this can have a point in it equals um, you know something like this. And we've got a double value that has even greater precision. Um, I can't remember the um, how many um, the maximum values of this off the top of my head, but um, you can easily look them up. Let's say double value equals something like this. Um, and if you do want to know the kind of maximum minimum minimum values, oh by the way there's um, something that I wanted to show you here which is that if you type a, um, a value with a point with a point in it here, a decimal point, it has um, a double type somehow by default. Um, and so when I try to assign a value with a floating point to a float value I get an error and it's going to say cannot convert from double to float. And one really simple way of dealing with that is just to put an F on the end of it, and that turns it into a float value. So it's useful to know. And if you wanted to know the maximum and minimum values for these types, you could look at the non-primitive versions of these. For example, uh, double. This is a class version that has various methods, and that's got like um, a max value on it. Um, for example, so um, or I could say you know like bytes dot max value. Let's just do a sys out on that so we can see sys out. And, um, and if I run that, um, it's 127. Um, now um, you can actually cast from one kind of numerical value to another. So if you have one kind of numerical value and you want to store it in a variable of a different type, you can use a cast. So I could say, for example, um, if I say like int value here uh, equals um, long value like that and I save it I'm going to get an error here because it's saying cannot convert from long to int um, but in fact I often can convert from long to int because if I look at this value here that would fit in an integer type it's a relatively small value so I can say here Int. Um, you put you put the, the type that you want to cast to this type in round brackets um, before the type that you're casting from, and now it accepts it and it's fine. And if I do a sys out on int value, um, and let's just run this program here, you can see it's still got the right value in because this this value fits comfortably in an int. You can also cast from um, floating point values. To int values all the other way. So let's say I have a um, now I've got an int value there. Let's say um, double value equals int value, um, and let's save that. Um, and in fact, it's it's letting me do that without even a cast. Um, but what's going to happen is it's just going to, of course, um, it's just going to put a point naught on the end of it, so it's converting comfortably to a double value. And you don't need a cast there because um, you're not 
in a sense you're not changing the value um, you're not chopping anything off or because um, here there's a potential complication that we'll look at in a second where if I had a long value that was too big to fit into an integer type because long is I think it's 64 bits and in 32 bits I think then um, you could potentially have problems so this kind of casting is a way of saying look I really know what I'm doing I definitely want to do this change it to an int whereas with this there's less potential for stuff to go wrong so Java will just do it for you you don't need a cast and we can convert the other way as well let's say I want to say um, supposing I have a double value let's set double value back to in fact let's use that float value there so I've got float set to 8834.3 uh, if I say int value equals uh, float value now there's potential for something to go wrong well not go wrong but the thing is we're going to lose the stuff after the floating point um, the point 0.3 let's change it to actually 0.8 um, uh, for a reason that I'll explain in a minute and uh, Java wants to know that you really do want to chop off the end of this here um, so you have to cast it and I, I can put a cast here I can cast from the float value to the int value and then let's do a sys out here on int value and if I run that then I've got 8834 8, and notice this is not rounding off it's literally chopped the end of it off um, if you wanted to round it you'd have to use uh, math.round um, but so if you just do a cast it's just going to cut the end off um, now one last thing I want to say in this tutorial which is that um, you have to be really careful trying to stuff um, an oversized type into a type that's not got enough memory to hold it so byte value um, as we've seen the maximum value of a byte is 127 and let's let's try to like um, let's say byte value here and let's try to cast um, a value to a byte that's too big so let's say 128 and I can literally um, type a number there as well it doesn't have to be a variable you can cast a number to an appropriate type um, so an alternative syntax here for example would be let's say float float value uh, 2 2 equals um, 99.3 so that's a double value so I need a cast but instead of putting an F on the end I could just put float here and that will work just as well uh, now here so 127 is the maximum value of a byte and I'm trying to put 128 into it and let's just do a sys out here and look what happens so byte value there um, and if I run that it's going to minus 128 which is the minimum value of it so it's kind of like it's, it's wrapped around um, so like um, that extra one has pushed it around the circle and it's gone kind of around the circle all the way to the minimum value that it can have so um, you have to be really careful and when you're typing this um, when you're typing a cast you're casting from one type to another you're um, implicitly doing something that could go wrong and you have to really carefully think is this going to work? Um, have I got enough memory in the type that I'm casting to um, to store the value that I'm casting from? Otherwise, you'll get very strange results. Let's just put um, uh, the following won't work. Um, well, it will work, um, but as we uh, expect it to. Um, and I just put a comment there um, 1 to 8 is too big for a byte ok and uh, sometimes um, beginners um, in programming will try to cast from one completely different class to another and you can't do that this just works because these numerical types are all um, all just storing numbers but you can't cast like from a you know a string to a um, I don't know to a um, uh, just, yeah, you can't cast from like a string to an integer that's a good example because um, often um, you've got an integer and you want to get a string from it and you can't just put a cast in there because these are two completely different objects you can't cast one from one to the other 
if you want to convert from an integer to a string, you have to use to string. And if you want to convert from a string to an integer, you'll have to use um, integer dot uh, parsint or something like that. So that's it for this tutorial. And in the next tutorial, we're going to look at upcasting and downcasting. So we're going to build on this to look at the really important topic of under what circumstances you can actually convert from one object to a different kind of object, because there are some circumstances where you can do that um, as long as there's a child-parent relationship there. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope that's useful. Um, join me again next time, and until next time, happy coding.